Hello there, I've got another video today from VGA Memories, www.vgamemories.co.uk. This video is, it's a copy of 3D Studio running on an old 386 processor with the 387 IIT coprocessor. Just thought this might be of interest to some people that were using this software back in the day. And I wanted to see how it would run on the 387. Just out of interest, here you can see I've loaded up a simple model. And it's, um, I'm just going through the preview mode. So the process is actually rendering this in, uh, in real time. We've just looked at the Fong mode. This is Gourad shading now. And in a second I'll, uh, I'll switch to something else. Have a look at the flat shading and the wireframe as well. As you can see, the little um, the little 387 is coping quite well, well really, with this simple model. It is very simple, only a few polygons, but uh, you forget how how things have moved on and how well how little power these processors had really. I think I'm going to load in another model now. Yeah, load in a more complicated model now, just to see how it copes. Okay, just trying to catch up. As you can see, it's uh, it's taken a while just to draw the bird on the screen, just to update the screens, taking the processor some time. But it's quite amazing, really. I mean, this software was you know pretty advanced at the time, and to be running it on a three eight six three eight seven, it's really sort of taking that processor to the the limits of its uh, capability, really. It, this you know this really is the the maximum that uh, the process is capable of as you can see I'm in the um, I'm in the preview mode again moving the wireframe about that's the maximum speed it can update at so it's updating a frame maybe every second or two that's how long it's taking so not really that usable um, in in a in a real time mode, and I think um, I think I'm gonna. Okay, I'm just using the keyframe now, so you can see it's updating the wireframe. We've done about five frames now, so it's taking nearly a couple of seconds to draw each each frame. I think I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna load up the big. The, one of the biggest models that was uh, provided with 3D Studio in the examples, the Chevy model. That's going to take it a while to load up, but it gives you an idea how the 387 copes in process. If you can just uh, excuse my narration, I'm just trying to narrate over this video. Not the easiest thing to do when. Uh, when you're not exactly a, a broadcaster or skilled at that sort of thing. Mm. It's going to take a while to load up, so just talk a bit about the system. Like I said before, it was a 386DX40, so the fastest 386 they made, an AMD processor, and it's using the IIT 387 coprocessor. So not the, uh, not the Intel version, a version made by a company called IIT, it was meant to be slightly faster than the Intel version. Not really got any other processors to compare it to, really. It's the only one I've got. It's the only motherboard I could get up and running. I've got a 286 system with a 287 coprocessor, but that wouldn't be capable of running this program because it needs to be um, a 386 for memory, memory access and virtual memory and stuff like that. Okay, the Chevy's come up, so it's actually drawing it now. It's taken a few seconds to draw the wireframe. And I'll keep on talking until the mouse cursor reappears and that will be uh, the wireframe drawn. So I've got the cursor back. I'm going to exit out a 3D Studio now, back into DOS, and you'll see the DOS prompt. And what I was doing here was um, I'm going to switch the light on and actually show you the motherboard will try and show you as best I can. So I've got there's my hands putting the light out. I'm going to show you the motherboard now. Show you what it was actually running on. So there it is, a little 
little 386 motherboards with a DX40 on board. You can see the 387 processor in the top right. It's next to the eight, uh, eight SIM modules that are giving 8 megabytes of memory, which is really the minimum you need to run 3D Studio. And we've got a uh, Trident graphics card. I've got it running on uh, on a SCSI, a 15,000 RPM hard drive on, a, on an adapter actually to an ISA SCSI card. And I've got a serial card there on the end as well.